because we kind of got the life up like that. Am I stopping? He should stop. I'm not riding, so he should go. Then when I come alive again, he ought to come alive. Different horse, Kip. Say again? Different horse. <laughs> yeah, he's a little different. Good, in a good way. So what you do is you have to look at that corner. Your flexing, getting longer inside leg, half off in your carriage. Well, you kind of remember me swinging the lead rope that first round. And the right, you kind of do it. We both have so black eyes. Good. But yeah, that's where you have to have all that that you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, this is what we're riding off of. With one hand kind of pays yeah, off. Because my other hand is pretty busy swinging my rope here. But he's still going to go accurately. Because my cow might decide to move before I get it caught. around the tail or under their oh, tail. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then see it move on that left eye like that. That can get them pretty upset. And even bother him. Yeah. I just love that stuff on the ground too. But like you said, it's different when it's on. See here, I might bump him up to the trough with it. Say, look, you got a trough. Otherwise, it's going to still be there. There you go. As soon as he gets to the trough, it comes away. What's his trot like, Kip? Oh, it's not so bad. It, <laughs> it will be better with more experience on his part, packing a rider. Uh huh. It's a little bit choppy right now. Yeah. But, you know, he's not all that big. Consider it. But it'll get better with time. Watch out. Looks like you got a lot of learning to do. That could be comic relief on a ranch yeah. roping clinic. I think he likes it though, you know? He likes having a job. He likes doing something. Well, it's using his mind. He used to get so darn bored.
God, I've seen horses <laughs> start backing up and running. The log wasn't such a big deal, but those marks in the sand. Really? Yeah. Is that yeah. fun? But that's pretty typical, really, of, of a lot of horses. Because the ground changes. Have difficulty with that ground change, exactly. Yeah, yeah. They're pretty cool with riding around and all that kind of stuff, but then they start riding through those kind of places. Isn't that funny? And they're like, hey, it's different there. It's you probably there. like creek crossing and ditch crossing and stuff, and even little puddles. Different. Yep. Preparation for the cow thing too, right? Small step, like, yeah. If we was going to maybe brand calves, might have to hold the calf by the heels, or you know, or probably not likely he'll be able to doctor yearlings because he's so small. But you know, you'd want him to be able to stand with the tight rope there going down to my cow on the loose rein because I wouldn't want to have to be doing this all the time because then it might have a tendency to pull too hard on the cow. So when the rope comes tight, I do this and say, look, you need to stand there. If the cow got the screwing around and, and did this, well, then I might have to go ahead and back up. But then I want him to stand there again on the loose rein, but hold the tight rope. Because the tight rope is unlikely that a cow can maybe kick out of it. Uh -huh. But you only got to put an eyelash worth of slack in that rope, and the cow can kick out of it. Or even a, even a baby calf. And it's all quite a bit more likely on a baby calf because their their hair is so slick just because it's really new, you know. Whereas typically a cow's hair is a little bit coarser; they've got some grip to it. But a baby calf's hair is really smooth and slick, and they don't take much slack in the rope to get let them kick out. So. This is the part that he has a little bit of trouble with yet. Yeah. But I gotta get my rope back. And I'm not getting off. <laughs> See, I'll let him check that out, but I won't let him bite on it or anything like that. Uh-huh. And I'd let him check it out. Some of this. 
reach again. That's good. I see, remember on the ground, you kind of had a hard time reaching to the right. We got a big step from up here, so it's going to be healed. Pretty good. Whoa. Yeah. So that's about all there is. Piece of cake. Say again? Piece of cake. Piece of cake, yep. You ever try to make a cake? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's easier there's than Fragment Force. There's somewhere. a commercial there on television about that. So the girl says, <clears throat> easy as pie, and the guy says, have you ever tried to make a pie? Mm-hmm. <laughs> And honestly, being outside, you know, like I was saying, I've, uh, I haven't encountered particularly anything that he's been kind of leery of. You know, once in a while, he kind of wants to go faster than the guy's riding, either at the trough or the canter, but that's just being a cult. You know, I'm, I, I don't put much stock in that because, you know, he'll get better with more experience. And that's just a matter of keeping him going. He's been on a million, like online, on yeah. the trail. I mean, he's done ton of that so he, he's real relaxed out there it's just this part and for you it's like breathing you do it and you're not even thinking about it and I'm still yeah. out there thinking about it well I just part of riding you know, not have a lot of experience of maybe doing the different maneuvers that you might do or something like that and quite honestly although you know I try to pattern my riding and whatnot, kind of after my teachers. Yep. So mine's quite a little different than theirs, without a doubt. Sure. But uh, if you hadn't ever been around this style of horsemanship taught this particular way, how would you know? You know. So you kind of got to muddle through some of it. That's what. That's the biggest reason why I require a 60-day stay on the horses that I haven't ridden for people before, or that kind of deal, because it puts enough cushion in the horses. Mm -hmm. While the people are trying to get things sorted out and figured out, the horses can kind of help them out. So. Well, and in a cult, you shouldn't have a cult kind of teach you how to do something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I really thought this is not a But pretty much, you know, for the most part, all the, all the gentling things are, are kind of taken care of and getting getting better each ride. Uh-huh. You know, it's just a matter of riding. You know. Putting on miles. Yeah, yeah. Now that's not to say a guy doesn't kind of go back and refresh the groundwork or refresh some of the real basic stuff, you know, every now and then. But, you know, that's just part of riding. I mean, it's not like I stopped that big red horse there that you guys saw when you first came with one rain anymore. Because he's beyond that. Uh -huh. However, that's not to say that I wouldn't feel all right about just sliding down one of those trains on that bridle, bring his head around here and, and check him out, and make sure I can still do it. Well, if I could do it there, chances are on his feet are moving, I could do it there too. A horse like him, because he's so green, pretty young, like, <clears throat> he wouldn't forsake stopping with or you wouldn't forsake stopping with one rein just because every once in a while you can stop with two. You want to keep stopping it with one rein as much as you can. Because it's not like he's perfect at doing this. It's getting better, but he's not perfect at it yet. Uh -huh. So, those are some of the things you guys touch on pretty regularly. And just getting back and going forward, I do a lot of this. Just to make sure that every time is the same. Uh -huh. Stay straight. Keeps his chin down and in, getting him to take the same length of steps with the right side and the left side, with the front and with the back. Mm -hmm. 